Hello viewers, we bring to you yet another module on the lifestyle management series and that is dependency and safety management. Viewers, dependency truly requires discretion. When discretion is broken, in the long run, alcohol and smoking leads towards medical ailments. And in the short run, in fact, it results in lack of safety. Professor Kennedy is here to talk to viewers on dependency and safety management, where to draw the line, where to use discretion, and where to say no. Friends, our topic is dependency and safety management. There are four basic concepts that we will be covering here. In dependency, we will talk about alcohol and smoking. There are other dependencies. There is narcotics and drug addiction. and India, there is pan. But smoking and alcohol are the major dependencies. In safety, we will talk about automobile safety and sexual safety, even while there are other aspects. There is recreational safety and work safety, but still, currently, automobile and sexual safety are the problems. So, dependency and safety management will comprise four topics, that is alcohol, smoking, safety in terms of HIV, as well as automobile. Let us first consider alcohol. What is alcohol? Alcohol comes from beer, it could come from wine, it can come from spirits. A spirit is distilled alcohol. It is alcohol that contains more than 50 to 70 percent spirit. Wine is about 20 to 25 percent alcohol and beer is less, maybe even 15 and less percent alcohol. Now the human body has the ability to metabolize alcohol at the rate of one unit per hour. In case you drink more than that, then you will go into a situation of breakdown. You will go into a situation of alcoholic effect. So the important point to keep in mind over here is you must never exceed or you must understand that the body can assimilate only one unit per hour. If you have more, it will have a detrimental effect. Now what happens if you have more? Assume you have a peg, you will feel cheerful. There is a lot of research that indicates that alcohol may be good. There are beneficial effects to alcohol, most certainly. Alcohol dilates the arteries. Alcohol reduces the bad cholesterol. Alcohol makes you cheerful. Alcohol relaxes you. But alcohol is addictive. And in case you exceed one peg, you will pay the price. And what is the price? In case you have three pegs, you will have a muscular dysfunction. This invariably results in accidents. If you have five pegs, you will find that you have neurological dysfunction. Neurological dysfunction is change of personality. You will not know what you are doing. You will be forgetful. You will behave in an inappropriate manner. If you have 10 pegs, you will go into a deep sleep from which you will not remember. And in case you exceed 10 pegs, you may go into a coma and even death. It is important to understand that the body only has the capability of metabolizing one unit of alcohol per hour. Never, never exceed this or we will pay the price. Alcohol is addictive. And there are phases in this addiction. You have the social phase. And in the social phase, you would have perhaps one to three pegs on any given occasion. You don't need more. You don't desire pegs. You can live without alcohol. But alcohol creates an increased tolerance, which means that in due course of time, to feel the same happiness, you will require higher dosage. And now you move into the risk phase. When you move into the risk phase, you find that you drink more than three pegs. You drink more than once a day. Or you drink more. You drink almost on a daily basis. 
you reach a stage of denial, you reach a stage of intellectualization. You know that it is bad for you, but when people ask you, do you drink, you say, no, I don't. Or you say, but drinking is good for me. You try and intellectualize. And then from there, you move into the stage of alcoholism. Alcoholism is where you cannot live without alcohol, where this is the chronic stage, this is the breakdown stage, where you need alcohol to be able to function, where you need alcohol to be able to survive. What is the effect of alcohol? Alcohol can have profound effects on the body. The first impact is on the brain. It creates a stage, a state of relaxation, but excessive alcohol can cauterize the brain. It creates a change in your personality. You become aggressive, you become morose, uh, you become antisocial. Excess alcohol can result in neurological dysfunction. It can result in muscular dysfunction. You get tremors. You, your body tends to become weaker. Alcohol has an effect on the digestive system. It reduces your desire for food. It causes ulcers. Alcohol can have a cardiomyopathic effect on the heart. It relaxes the heart muscle. The heart becomes weak. Alcohol can have an effect on the intestines, the creation of ulcers. It can reduce the sexual urge. And in pregnant ladies, alcohol can result in malfunction. It can result in low weight babies. It can result in sexual dysfunction in male as well as female. So what is the effect of alcohol? The effect of alcohol is profound on the family. It results in ethical breakdown. It results in financial breakdown. It results in creating a bad image to the children. So how do we manage alcohol? How do we create a situation where we can control alcohol? There are some simple rules. Rule number one, never exceed one peg of alcohol. Rule number two, always dilute your alcohol with water, never with an aerated drink. Rule number three, always eat something before you have alcohol because alcohol will go straight into the bloodstream otherwise. Rule number four, never drink every day. Rule number five, if you cannot adhere to these, you must quit. How do we quit? There are several methods. You could use the psychological method of group counseling. You could use the physiological method of avoiding social functions where they serve alcohol. You could use the behavioral method of avoiding pubs, of avoiding keeping alcohol at home. And if you cannot conform to any of these, you may need to use the medical method. The medical method will result in withdrawal symptoms. The medical method will require injections. The medical method will require a doctor's support. But you need to have these systems. The rule is be a social drinker at best. Not drinking alcohol is better than drinking alcohol. There were some things good that we might have said about alcohol. There is nothing good that can be said about cigarette smoking. Each cigarette contains more than 4,000 chemicals. Some of these chemicals, most of these chemicals are destructive to the body. Smoking contains carbon monoxide, which reduces oxygen, acids that destroy lung tissue, uh, glycol, which is a tranquilizer, benzene, hydrocarbons, tar that causes cancer, nicotine and cyanide, all of which are addictive and destructive. Smoking is the single biggest killer in the world. Why do we smoke? There are several reasons. Smoking has the profound capability of relaxing you and stimulating you at the same time. Many individuals smoke to concentrate. Many individuals smoke to relax. Many of us smoke simply because it is a habit. Many of us smoke because we are addicted. Smoking causes cancer. 60% of individuals who smoke will get cancer. Are you in that 60%? There are different factors that quantify this. But yes, there is a high risk. So how do we quit smoking? There are several methods. You could stop immediately. This is known as the quitting cold turkey method. 
or you could cut down. That's the second method. You could use aversion therapy. You could use healthy substitutes. You could use medical systems. Within your own control, you could use, say, three systems. One is the cutting down method. How do you cut down? You could reduce your cigarettes by half in the first week and half every second week. You could break your cigarette into half and smoke the cigarette. You could postpone your first cigarette by an hour every day and as a consequence of which you will find that you are smoking at the end of two or three weeks in the middle of the night at which time you would be asleep. You can cut down by never smoking in public places, by never smoking at home, by never smoking in the office. As a matter of fact, it is now legally, it is now legally implemented that you cannot smoke in aeroplanes, you cannot smoke in public places, you cannot smoke on trains. There is a penal offense for this. You could use the cutting down method. That is one option. You could use the quitting cold method. The quitting cold method is a method by which you take a decision to stop and you stop. You, take, you can take the support of your family and friends. How many of us succeed in the quitting cold method? 33% of us succeed. Now, this 33% of individuals who succeed are the lucky ones. They are able to give up immediately. About 30% of individuals use the cutting down method. In the cutting down method, you will find that they use several methods and repeated, repeated, repeated trial results in their success. About 30% of us are never able to quit. And this is the group that unfortunately gets cancer. And remember, 60% of individuals who smoke will get cancer. 30% are not able to quit. And those are difficult ratios. Why do we smoke? We smoke for different reasons. Can we get healthy substitutes? And individuals who smoke a cigarette after a meal smoke to relax. You can use music to relax. You can use yoga to relax. You can use meditation to relax. There are those individuals who smoke to perk up for stimulation. You could do exercise to stimulate yourself. You can go for a walk to stimulate yourself. That would be a healthy substitute. There are those of us who smoke because it is a habit. Always avoid. Never keep cigarettes at home. Never go to the same shop where you buy cigarettes. Never keep a cigarette, a packet of cigarettes on yourself. This will break the habit. And there are those of us who are addicted. Those of us will need medical help. We will need medical patches. We will need nicotine patches or nicotine gum. Those are the healthy substitutes. What are the benefits of quitting smoking? The benefits of smitting, quitting smoking are profound. You prevent yourself from cancer and this is the most important. You improve your health. Smoking costs money. The amount of money you save on buying cigarettes will buy you a house within your lifetime. Your family will benefit. Your family will benefit. You will have improved appetite, improved sleep. You will have an improved sexual response. Smoking causes accelerated aging. When you quit smoking, you can actually grow younger every year. There are several reasons why you must quit. And there are several reasons to under understand why smoking is bad. Smoking must be given up. Smoking causes cancer. Alcohol causes cirrhosis of the liver. Lack of safety also results in debility and death. Automobile safety can result in injury. Sexual safety or lack of sexual safety can result in HIV. How do we adhere to the rules of automobile safety? First as commuters and as pedestrians, and then as individuals who drive two-wheelers or individuals who drive cars. As far as commuters are concerned, you must understand that 60% of individuals who use vehicles will have accident. The probability is that if you were to drive a vehicle for 60 minutes a day 
or if you were within a vehicle for 60 minutes a day, there is a 60% probability that you will have an accident within the next 60 months. And 14% of accidents are fatal. That is as regards commuters, individuals who use public transport. What about pedestrians? How do pedestrians adhere to the rules of safety within the environment, within a road? Always cross a road in the zebra crossing. Never attempt to cross a road in between. It could result in a fatal accident. Always use a pavement. Whenever you have to walk, use a pavement. And in case there is no pavement, you must always walk such that you are facing transport. Never walk with your back towards oncoming vehicles. What about individuals who have, have their own vehicles? How do they adhere to the rules of safety? The first is maintenance. You must ensure that your vehicle is serviced. You must ensure that your vehicle's brakes, lights, windscreen wipers are all functional. You must at all times wear safety equipment. Remember that more than 50% of individuals who do not use safety equipment will die in the accident. Those of us who have two-wheelers must wear helmets. Those of us who drive cars must wear seat belts. It is important to observe safety rules of the road, red lights, one way, speed limits. It is important to adhere to these. The faster you drive, the quicker you drive towards an accident. Now, in case you are driving long distance, it is important to keep in mind that every 60 minutes, in spite of the fact that you may feel comfortable, Every 60 minutes, you must take a break. Never drive under medication. There are several of us who take medication for hypertension. It is better not to drive during these periods. Or in case you need to drive, then you need to take your doctor's approval to ensure that the medication that you take is not a tranquilizer. Never drive under alcohol. 30% of all accidents or more are caused by individuals who are sedated. In modern days, we have got a new problem that is turning out to be a major killer in the form of automobile accidents, the use of cell phones. Cell phones results in your having, some of us do not use the earplug cell phone system and we actually hold the phone to our ear with one hand. This results in you taking your hand off the driving wheel and using only one hand on the wheel. This certainly causes accidents. But more than the physical aspect, is it is the mental concentration. When you are talking on a cell phone, you find that your mind is not on your driving. What happens when you have an accident? In order to be ready for a situation in which you are either involved in an accident or are witness to an accident, it is important for all of us to attend first aid courses. Learning in a first aid course will teach you how to handle an emergency. The first step is call for a doctor, call for help. That is the first thing that you must do. Thereafter, eliminate further danger and obstacles. In case there is any impediment on the individual, remove that impediment. Never move a patient in case there is a fracture, in case there is a spinal injury, except to ensure that the patient is breathing. To avoid choking, turn the client to the side. If there is a spinal injury, make sure that the spine is constant. Otherwise, turn the individual to the side so that saliva and fluids can move out of the mouth. If there is bleeding, stop profuse bleeding by simply pressing on or above the wound. In case there is burns, only use simple water to remove the burns. Give the patient who is burnt sufficient water to drink. Internal hydration is as important as external hydration. If the patient is unconscious, you may need to use cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which means simply breathe into the patient's mouth and press the patient's rib cage to ensure that there is sufficient pressure on the heart to beat. But most important, always 
call the doctor. Always call a doctor, call an ambulance to ensure that immediate help. These are the important minutes that are necessary in saving a life. We have spoken about automobile safety. Now let us talk about another form of safety, and that is sexual safety. How do we ensure sexual safety? The first important step is always avoid sex workers. Remember that more than 50 to 60 percent of our sex workers have sexually transmitted diseases, many of which have HIV and AIDS. We must always avoid multi-partners. Avoid multi-partners because you never know the sexual history of the individual that you are dealing with. Avoid unsafe sexual practices. Always ensure the use of a condom and the most important rule of safety in sexual life is a mutually monogamous sexual relationship. A sexual relationship with one individual only. This is the most important rule. What is HIV AIDS? HIV AIDS is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. That is AIDS. It is the last stage of infection caused by the human immune deficiency virus which destroys the human immune system, which means that once the immune system is destroyed, you can pick up any infection that is in the atmosphere. It could be any type of infection. It could be pneumonia. It could be malaria. It could be digestive problems. It could even be cancer. AIDS destroys the immune system. How is AIDS spread? Of course, we have heard of mother to child. An infected mother will pass AIDS on to the child. The child may not survive more than two to three years. Who gives AIDS to the mother? AIDS is given to the mother invariably by an husband who has probably not been faithful. You could also get AIDS by inappropriate donation, by receiving organ from an un, organs from an unlicensed hospital. But these are rare situations. 14% of AIDS is caused by and large by individuals who are HIV drug users, sharing of needles, sharing of piercing equipment. Drug users also have low sexual morals. This results in HIV AIDS. But the major cause of AIDS is inappropriate sexual activity. How do we test HIV AIDS? How do we know that we have HIV AIDS? There is a quick, easy, simple test, and that is the ELISA test. The ELISA test does not cost too much. It will give you a result within a day or two. But in order to confirm whether you have test, whether you have HIV AIDS, you need to have another test. And this is the Western blot test. The Western blot test is a confirmatory test. It costs a little more, about 1,200 to 1,300 rupees. But it is necessary to have a Western blot to confirm whether you have AIDS. However, keep in mind, there is a window period of AIDS, which means that even if you have a test within the first six months of having HIV, you will not detect it on the test because the antibodies in the body have not been created and therefore you will not be able to detect it. There is worse news. That for the first 10 years of having HIV, you will not be able to detect it. It is asymptomatic, which means that you do not know you have it. Nobody who sees you will know that you have, have it, that you have it, but you can easily pass it on to anyone that you associate with in a sexual way. After 10 years, the symptoms manifest themselves. What are these symptoms? It could be weight loss or diarrhea, or it could be herpes or candida and thrush in the mouth and in the sexual areas. Your lymphatic organs will become to malfunction. You will have mental dementia, neurological dysfunction, tuberculosis, cancer, and even death. Not even death, but most certainly death. AIDS cannot be spread through the use of shared food, cutlery, handshake, hugs, toilet seats. 
the use of towels or clothes by an individual who is infected by AIDS. This does not spread AIDS. AIDS can only be spread by sexual contact, by direct exchange of fluids. So how do we protect ourselves? You protect yourself by never sharing a piercing equipment. Now this has become legally essential in every hospital. Never donate blood or take blood except from a registered blood bank. Avoid risky sex and this involves the entire spectrum. The use of a condom may be used in moments where you go beyond the relationship, but that again, I've mentioned, is playing with danger. The answer to the problem is mutually faithful monogamous sexual relationships between two individuals who remain faithful to each other. So what is the end summary of dependency and safety management? You must say no. No to smoking and no to alcohol. And you must say yes. Yes to safe driving and yes to safe sex. If you cannot adhere to these principles, most certainly you will pay a price. Viewers, say no and you will benefit from health and safety. Don't and you will surely pay the price. So let's benefit from the advantage of management of dependency and safety and in fact learn the lesson of when to say thanks but no thanks.